What determines the location, size and shapes of states throughout history? In this video, we will use an empire simulator that I made to explore how geography affects political outcomes. For instance, how agricultural potential determine capital location and how the cost of travel affect the reach of empires. But first, what are we trying to do here? We can observe the real world, but we can't directly see the rules that govern politics and history. What we can do is to make up our own rules, simple rules, a model which we can understand. For instance, that state territory is determined by travel costs. We then simulate the world that follows from our made-up rules, and if the simulated world looks a lot like the real thing, this tells us that our model might be similar to the real rules of the world. If not, we have to adapt it. This is basic science. But no model can be perfect. By focusing on different factors, they answer different questions. For instance, this video by Fractal Philosophy simulates empires by focusing on loyalty and group feeling rather than terrain, as I do. In the previous video, the only important rule was the cost of travel across different types of terrain determined territory shape. We got some interesting results, but there were important factors that were not explained by the model. For instance, the model could not tell us why capitals were located where they were or why some empires were larger than others. Both capital location and empire size had to be set manually. That means they were exogenous, outside the model. In this update, I want to try to endogenize them, that is, bring them into the model. And the new rule we will be adding to do that is that some land has more value. Controlling valuable land gives power. What could that value represent? The obvious factor, I think, is agricultural potential, fertile land, at least in history. Fertile land can support a larger population, which means power and income. But it could, of course, also be many other things. Valuable metals such as copper, silver, gold or fossil fuels. In the Industrial Revolution, coal and later oil became strategically important. And nowadays it's rare earth metals used for making batteries and electronics. But in the pre-modern era we're trying to simulate, the main driver must have been agriculture. The UN has data on how much yield one can get from different crops in different parts of the world, taking soil and climate into account. I chose the top calorie producing crop for each grid cell. And I only used crops that were available before the Colombian exchange, meaning no corn or potatoes in the old world and no wheat or rice in the new world. In the simulator we can then load these value maps. If we look at the world it basically looks like a population density map, meaning that we're onto something here. The scale runs from 0 to 61, with higher numbers meaning more value, and the value maps are stored in grid text files, similar to how we store terrain files. Here we can see the total value of the land under control by this empire. Now that we know what land empires want, we can introduce a simple optimization function. This button right here makes the empire capital move a grid cell in a random direction. If it increases the land value, it keeps the new position, otherwise it moves back. So if we place a capital here in the Rocky Mountains, it will gradually move to the more fertile lands in the Midwest. With more empires, they compete for the best spots. That means that capital location can now be determined and explained inside the model. We can also let the optimization function adjust the travel sliders. It then randomly varies the sliders, moving one up and one down, keeping the new settings if it increases land value under control of the empire. And finally, this checkbox is inspired by the comments on the previous video saying that power should be influenced by resources. Thank you for these suggestions. We set empire size to the value of the land under control divided by a number given by this slider here. This way each empire will grow to the size given by its land value. Lower thresholds means larger empires. Like this. And if we paint in another valuable patch, for instance representing a gold mine or something, the empire can grow some more. Let's now place some capitals at random, let them grow according to land value and have them optimize their placement. We will use the same default travel costs for all empires. I experimented a little and these looked good. I'll just stop talking now and run through the simulations, have a look and then I'll tell you my observations afterwards.
here are my takeaways, starting with the things the simulator does a good job of explaining. First are clusters on valuable land. We often see states clustering together on valuable pieces of land, where smaller territory is compensated by higher value of that territory. This can be seen in the real world, in the Balkans for instance. Big states in the simulation have their capitals on the most valuable parts of their territory. This is because capitals in the desert cannot grow big, and with no capitals there the land is up for grabs by other large empires. We see this in the real northern Africa, where the Sahara is divided by states whose capitals are in other places. These capitals just next to each other look quite strange, but are a logical consequence of control based on proximity. As long as you don't have someone in your back, it's good to get close to your neighbors. Like Buenos Aires and Montevideo, Vienna and Bratislava, Helsinki and Tallinn, and of course Kinshasa and Brazzaville. And now for cases where the simulation does not match with reality. There are basically no coastal capitals in the simulation. It's all about having land territory, which makes it better to be inland. But in the real world, many major cities are on the coast. The missing ingredient is probably trade, which I will try to add in the next video. There are no big states on valuable land in the simulation. We don't see Brazil or China or Russia, because when there is value, other capitals move in. The missing ingredient is force. When a real state grows stronger than its neighbors, it conquers. This is not accounted for in the simulation. But if we allow it, the simulation becomes much more chaotic. Small variations in starting conditions will give advantages that lead to big consequences down the line. This is what happens in the real world, but it makes things much harder to predict. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and please play with the simulator yourself. It's free and available on the link in the description. Subscribe if you want to see more updates and leave a comment on which direction you would like this project to take in the future. See you next time.